The Decline of Western Civilization is a 1981 American documentary film shot in the Los Angeles hardcore punk scene between 9 December 1979 and May 1980. The film was directed by Penelope Spheris, later known for directing Wayne's World, of all things. Much of the runtime consists of concert footage of several LA hardcore punk acts in betwixt interviews of the band members. Also interviewed extensively are the publishers of the Slash fanzine, as well as several of the fans who attend these gigs. The film acts as a sincere attempt at learning about its chosen subculture. The title is Mocking in Nature, a potential sneer of those who might refer to these budding tendencies of Generation X as the decline of Western civilization as we know it. The bands featured in this film include Black Flag, with Ron Ray's on vocals, Germs, whose singer Darby Crash died of a heroin overdose prior to this film's actual release, X, Alice Bag Band, The Circle Jerks, Catholic Discipline, and Fear. I'm not personally the biggest fanatic of the American hardcore punk movement, although the Germs LPGI is one of my favourite rock albums ever, and probably my favourite thing in American punk unless we count a Stooges album. Absolutely brilliant listening experience, I'd highly, highly recommend it. Darby Crash is depicted on this film's poster, a shot of one of this film's most memorable moments. I'd like to now read out a contemporaneous review of this film from Variety magazine. Here we go. The best rock music docos over the years have always managed to complement the presentation of live performances with an acute sense of the sociological moment, and so it is with the decline of Western civilization. A bracing, stimulating, and technically superb close-up look at the LA punk scene, Pick is pitched at a perfect distance to allow for simultaneous engagement in the music and spectacle, and for rueful contemplation of what it all might mean. An advertised preview is set for Man's Hollywood at midnight tonight, and film's quality and unusual content indicates a bright B.O. future in specialised venues. Artistic strategy here is to combine provocative performance footage with at-home interviews with punk group members and talks with club owners, managers, critics, and hardcore fans. While not aspiring to be the, to a comprehensive film, to the comprehensive film nevertheless constitutes a 100-minute total immersion in the indigenous California punk world and will probably prove satisfying to those involved in it as well as the curious onlookers who have thus far resisted first-hand exposure. While a few of the rockers come off as artificial poses, many more surprise through revealing articulation of whys and wherefores of their lifestyle, and what comes through most strongly is purity of their dedication to their music. As most local bands are without major label affiliation, and several on view here are considered too disruptive to book by most clubs, musicians exist on a subsistence basis, and speak of how they make no money from their gigs. Perhaps of special interest to insiders would be kitchen table interview with Darby Crash, late lead singer for The Germs, who is obviously living on, if not over, the edge as he takes his pet tarantula out for a walk on his arm. Lensing out of the club dates leave nothing to be desired, as the centres of the acts themselves are well captured and the incessant slam dancing of the spectators provides a frenzied background. Film soundtrack album has already made a strong impression on the charts. And while recording quality is excellent, Pick also has the wit to provide written subtitles of certain songs which, of which delivery allows for no comprehension. Given top-notch craftsmanship, it's hard to believe effort was made independently for $100,000 and well nigh impossible to detect the 35mm print as a 16mm blow-up. 16mm blow-up. Producer-director Penelope Spheris made several shorts for Saturday Night Live and produced Real Life for Pa and Albert Brooks before embarking on this project in 1979. Pick manages to bring insight and unity to an anarchic, not easily explained scene and delivers the musical goods at the same time. In my opinion, this is far and away the most interesting of Spheris' decline trilogy. The metal years were hollow, and she was clearly trying to mock her subjects, not that they ought to be free from mockery. Then that gutter punk episode come, came across as a condescending attempt to idealise her subjects as some beautiful manifestation of human expression. This may not have been the intent of that film, but honestly, it, it, it came across as such to me. Anyway, this documentary is highly recommended. For those who are interested in this particular scene, you have already seen this. For those who are not knowledgeable about the American hardcore punk scene of the early 1980s, now, this film is a superb and entertaining education. Strap in and enjoy the ride.